a Wikividi Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Esitala Pram Esitala Pram, sold under the brand name Cipralix among others, is an antidepressant of the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor class. Esitalopram is mainly used to treat major depressive disorder or generalized anxiety disorder. It is taken by mouth. Common side effects include trouble sleeping, nausea, sexual problems, and feeling tired. More serious side effects may include suicide in people under the age of 25. It is unclear if used during pregnancy or breastfeeding is safe. Esitalopram is the stereoisomer of the earlier medication citalopram, hence the name esitalopram. Esitalopram was approved for medical use in the United States in 2002. Whether esitalopram is more effective than citalopram or merely an effort to extend a patent over a product in which it was about to expire is controversial. In the United States the wholesale cost is about US$2.04 per month as of 2017. In the United Kingdom in 2015, esitalopram was more than 20 times as expensive as citalopram. Esitalopram can often be replaced by twice the dose of citalopram. Medical Uses Esitalopram has FDA approval for the treatment of major depressive disorder in adolescents and adults, and generalized anxiety disorder in adults, in European countries and Australia. It is approved for depression and certain anxiety disorders, general anxiety disorder, social anxiety disorder, obsessive compulsive disorder, and panic disorder with or without agoraphobia. Depression Esitalopram was approved by regulatory authorities for the treatment of major depressive disorder on the basis of four placebo-controlled, double-blind trials, three of which demonstrated a statistical superiority over placebo. Controversy exists regarding the effectiveness of esitalopram compared to its predecessor citalopram. The importance of this issue follows from the greater cost of esitalopram relative to the generic mixture of isomers citalopram prior to the expiration of the esitalopram patent in 2012, which led to charges of evergreening. Accordingly, this issue has been examined in at least 10 different systematic reviews and meta-analyses. The most recent of these have concluded that esitalopram is modestly superior to citalopram in efficacy and tolerability. In contrast to these findings, a 2011 review concluded that all second-generation antidepressants are equally effective in treatment guidelines issued by the National Institute of Health and Clinical Excellence and by the American Psychiatric Association generally reflect this viewpoint. Other Esitalopram as well as other SSRIs are effective in reducing the symptoms of premenstrual syndrome, whether taken in the luteal phase only or continuously. There is no good data available for esitalopram for seasonal affective disorder as of 2011. SSRIs do not appear to be useful for preventing tension headaches or migraines. Side effects Esitalopram, like other SSRIs, has been shown to affect sexual functions causing side effects such as decreased libido, delayed ejaculation, and anorgasmia. An analysis conducted by the FDA found a statistically insignificant 1.5 to 2.4-fold increase of suicidality among the adults treated with esitalopram for psychiatric indications. The authors of a related study note the general problem with statistical approaches, due to the rarity of suicidal events in clinical trials. It is hard to draw firm conclusions with a sample smaller than 2 million patients. Esitalopram is not associated with significant weight gain, for example, 0.6 kg mean weight change after six months of treatment with esitalopram for depression was insignificant and similar to that with placebo. 1.4-1.8 kg mean weight gain was reported in eight-month trials of esitalopram for depression and generalized anxiety disorder. A 52-week trial of esitalopram for the long-term treatment of depression in elderly also found insignificant 0.6 kg mean weight gain. Esitalopram may help reduce weight in those treated for binge eating-associated obesity. Citalopram and esitalopram are associated with dose-dependent QT interval prolongation and should not be used in those with congenital long QT syndrome, 
or known pre-existing QT interval prolongation, or in combination with other medicines that prolong the QT interval. ECG measurements should be considered for patients with cardiac disease, and electrolyte disturbances should be corrected before starting treatment. In December 2011, the UK implemented new restrictions on the maximum daily doses. The US Food and Drug Administration and Health Canada did not similarly order restrictions on escitalopram dosage, only on its predecessor citalopram. Escitalopram should be taken with caution when using St. John's wort. Exposure to escitalopram is increased moderately by about 50% when it is taken with omeprazole. The authors of this study suggested that this increase is unlikely to be of clinical concern. Caution should be used when taking cough medicine containing dextromethorphan or serotonin syndrome, liver damage, and other negative side effects have been reported. Discontinuation Symptoms Escitalopram discontinuation, particularly abruptly, may cause certain withdrawal symptoms such as electric shock, sensations, dizziness, acute depressions and irritability, as well as heightened senses of acathisia. Pregnancy There is a tentative association of SSRI use during pregnancy with heart problems in the baby. Their use during pregnancy should thus be balanced against that of depression. Overdose Excessive doses of escitalopram usually cause relatively minor untoward effects such as agitation and tachycardia. However, dyskinesia, hypotonia, and clonus may occur in some cases. Plasma escitalopram concentrations are usually in a range of 20 80g/l in therapeutic situations and may reach 80 plus 200g/l in the elderly. Patients with hepatic dysfunction, those who are poor type 2C19 metabolizers or following acute overdose, monitoring of the drug in plasma or serum is generally accomplished using chromatographic methods. Gerald techniques are available to distinguish escitalopram from its racemate, citalopram. Escitalopram seems to be less dangerous than citalopram in overdose and comparable to other SSRIs. Mechanism of action Escitalopram increases intrasynaptic levels of the neurotransmitter serotonin by blocking the reuptake of the neurotransmitter into the presynaptic neuron. Of the SSRIs currently on the market, Escitalopram has the highest selectivity for the serotonin transporter compared to the norepinephrine transporter making the side effect profile relatively mild in comparison to less selective SSRIs. Escitalopram is a substrate of P-glycoprotein, and hence P-glycoprotein inhibitors such as verapamil and quinidine may improve its blood-brain penetrability. In a pre-clinical study in rats combining escitalopram with a P-glycoprotein inhibitor, its antidepressant-like effects were enhanced. Interactions Escitalopram similarly to other SSRIs, inhibits CYP2D6, and hence may increase plasma levels of a number of CYP2D6 substrates such as aripiprazole, risperidon, tramadol, codeine, etc. As much of the effect of codeine is attributable to its conversion to morphine its effectiveness will be reduced by this inhibition, not enhanced. As escitalopram is only a weak inhibitor of CYP2D6, analgesia from tramadol may not be affected. Escitalopram can also prolong the QT interval, and hence it is not recommended in patients that are concurrently on other medications that have the ability to prolong the QT interval. Being ASSRI, escitalopram should not be given concurrently with MAOIs or other serotonergic medications. History Escitalopram was developed in close cooperation between Lundbeck and Forest Laboratories. Its development was initiated in the summer of 1997 and the resulting new drug application was submitted to the US FDA in March 2001. The short time it took to develop escitalopram can be attributed to the previous extensive experience of Lundbeck and Forrest with citalopram, which has similar pharmacology. The FDA issued the approval of escitalopram for major depression in August 2002 and for generalized anxiety disorder in December 2003. On May 23, 2006, the FDA approved a generic version of escitalopram by Teva. On July 14 of that year, however, the U.S. District Court of Delaware decided in favor of Lundbeck regarding the patent infringement dispute and ruled the patent on escitalopram valid.
In 2006 Forest Laboratories was granted an 828-day extension on its U.S. patent for escitalopram. This pushed the patent expiration date from December 7, 2009 to September 14, 2011. Together with the six-month pediatric exclusivity, the final expiration date was March 14, 2012. Allegations of Illegal Marketing In 2004, Two separate civil suits alleging illegal marketing of citalopram and escitalopram for use by children and teenagers by Forrest were initiated by two whistleblowers, one by a practicing physician named Joseph Piacentile, and the other by a Forrest salesman named Christopher Gobble. In February 2009, these two suits received support from the U.S. Attorney for Massachusetts and were combined into one. Eleven states and the District of Columbia have also filed notices of intention to intervene as plaintiffs in the action. The suits allege that Forrest illegally engaged in off-label promoting of Lexapro for use in children. That the company hid the results of a study showing lack of effectiveness in children, and that the company paid kickbacks to physicians to induce them to prescribe Lexapro to children. It was also alleged that the company conducted so-called seeding studies that were in reality, marketing efforts to promote the drugs used by doctors. Forrest responded to these allegations that it is committed to adhering to the highest ethical and legal standards, and off-label promotion and improper payments to medical providers have consistently been against Forrest policy. In 2010 Forrest Pharmaceuticals Incorporated agreed to pay more than $313 million to settle the charges over Lexapro and two other drugs, Levothroid and Celexa. Brought to you by Wikividi Documentaries. Would you like to know more?